even local council levels, making sure that that is taking place. So that's been a really interesting talk from Martin. We are following up with the director of Questacon, who is actually working on developing frameworks around Australia so that scientists can be part of a dialogue with the public and a dialogue with politicians. So Questacon, Professor Graham Durant uh, is the final speaker before lunch and he's director of Questacon, which if you don't know, is Australia's National Science and Technology Centre. He also has a distinguished background as a geologist and he spent 25 years at the University of Glasgow, but he became progressively more interested in science communication and had, was awarded a professional, a pro personal chair. It's hard to say personal professorship, but I'll get it. I'll get through it. In science communication and interpretation, he joined Questacon in 2003, and one of his jobs is leading the Inspiring Australia initiative to develop a national science communication strategy for Australia. And that does include the Prime Minister's Science Prizes, National Science Week, and you will find a document on each of your tables, a pamphlet which gives you more information. But please welcome to the stage one of our very important science communicators and directors across Australia, Professor Graham Durant. So th thank you, Emma, and uh, good afternoon. So are you inspired, tired, or just hungry? Probably just hungry, so I'll try and be brief because we're approaching lunchtime. So who has inspired you recently? Who's inspired you enough to make you change your attitudes or behaviours? What about the person sitting next to you at the table or the one across the table? Are they helping to inspire Australia? Are you? And who have you inspired today? And what are you doing to inspire your local MP or your other parliamentarians or your local community? And are you sharing your passion for science? Inspiration changes attitudes and behaviors and it leads to motivation. And it's everyone's business. It's my business, it's your business. We're all in it together. So when you ask the question, who is inspiring Australia? Reframe the question as, who needs to inspire Australia? And the answer is, we all do. The relationship between science and society is one of the critical pillars of the government's agenda for science. And the positive community attitude can increase the security of science and the overall social license within which science operates. You can see many examples of how society has a love-hate relationship with science. And unless we're constantly engaged in the community discussions about the values of science and what science-based thinking is about, we risk becoming isolated um, by some members of public during some of the emotive public debates. You've only got to follow the media and social media on discourse on vaccinations, energy futures, fad diets, to know that better communication of science and better understanding of science in the community are not things that can simply be tacked on to the end of research projects. Science communication is not a thing that can simply be done by overworked scientists. It's a complex issue requiring professional approaches. So science and scientists serve society and that relationship has to be uh, acknowledged and you've got to understand the role of science in that broader social context. And importantly, you cannot take public support for science for granted. So it requires effort. Increasing the community's science literacy is where the Inspiring Australia initiative comes in. And we've been leading that initiative since 2010. It's not just a government program that delivers activities, but rather an integrated national approach to science engagement that has been taken up by many different agencies in the science sector. We think it's unique in the world. We've not found any other models that have such a coherent national approach. Inspiring Australia has now overseen 5,000 discrete projects involving many local partnerships that have impacted upon 6 million participants. That's one in four people walking around your local shops or sitting in the sporting arena. And this, this, this success was driven by collaborative effort involving many organizations and individuals. And it's required a coherent approach, which is facilitated by three national leadership groups connecting different types of organizations and six expert-led strategy groups that have 
develop well-researched reports and recommendations on topics such as uh, science in the media, marine science communications, and indigenous science. And we make this happen with a network of eight co-funded Inspiring Australia offices who are located in each state and territory, as well as with a multitude of partners from the science and business sectors. There are many successful pro project outcomes, but today I just want to highlight a few achievements and indicate some forward directions. So we're very, very proud of the grassroots projects that emerged through the Unlocking Australia's Potential Grants Round. We had 240 applicants looking for a total of $44 million in funding. Now, unfortunately, we only had $5 million to, to give away, but that funded 63 projects. And of those projects, 12 had national reach, 24 were focused on youth engagement, 11 very strongly so, and 16 had a major indigenous audience or content focus, with nine very strongly focused on indigenous science. The Australian government's $5 million investment in that grants round has to date leveraged $10 million from the applicants and their partners. And although the funding agreements for many of those projects are coming to the end, with only a few final reports to come in, uh, over half of those projects are now sustainable and ongoing. And that in itself is uh, very important, that they're not dependent on ongoing government funding. And many of the projects are driven by people just like you, enthusiastic scientists with a passion for sharing their knowledge and their discoveries. One example was the Syro Ecosystem Sciences Project to engage Aboriginal Tiwi Island communities on the issue of climate change. One part of the project involved the senior girls of Tiwi College writing a song about climate change in collaboration with the Northern Territory Music School's Vamp TV. And you can view their emotive film clip on YouTube. Other examples are the biodiversity apps produced by the state museums for each of the territories and states, or the Red Map Citizen Science website that allows divers and fishermen to log, log their discoveries and help scientists monitor changes in biodiversity. The partnerships with state and territory governments have been particularly successful through working together to deliver on science engagement in Australian communities. Let me give you some statistics. In New South Wales alone, 19 regional Inspiring Australia hubs have now been established, connecting over 200 local organisations to support year-round science outreach into their communities. Over 440 events were held across New South Wales in 12-13, reaching an estimated 48,000 people, which is more than the capacity crowd for the Sydney Cricket Ground. Neural networks and other projects saw thousands of Australians creating textile neurons for a giant brain installation that's been exhibited in a number of locations. And more than 800 people enjoyed two full days of performances, art, conversations, and biodiversity talks at site works in BioBlitz in Bundanoon. In Queensland, over 2,500 people attended 27 Café Scientifique events in Brisbane over a two-year period involving 100 partner organisations. Townsville's Science and Technology Festival, which featured three Prime Minister's Prize winning scientists, attracted 200 school children and 500 members of the public. And 70 talks, films, presentations and other events in Tasmania reached an estimated 50,000 people, not counting National Science Week events. And that's enough to fill Hobart's largest indoor venue, the Derwent Entertainment Complex, six times over. And these are clear measures of successful science engagement around the country. In addition to this, we've got the two main projects that Emma mentioned, the Prime Minister's Prizes for Science and National Science Week. Each year I get the privilege of meeting the winners of the Prime Minister's Prizes for Science and for Science Teaching. And they are, without exception, inspiring people with inspirational stories. And their prizes are awarded for the most prestigious science achievements and excellence in science teaching. And they are highly regarded by the community. This year, we've got a new prize for, to recognize the commercial application of science, to recognize the generation of wealth from science, the translation of science into industry. And we're very pleased that the total prize pool has now gone up to 700,000 across six prize categories, recognizing and rewarding excellence. And if you fancy putting your hat in the ring, well, you've got two days left to get a two-page uh, application in. And uh, there are on your desk 
some information about it, and uh, you know, you've got to be in it to win it. So uh, please think carefully about that. I hope that you've already taken part in a National Science Week event, possibly through some novel activity seeking to link science and the public in new ways in new places. National Science Week has grown to become Australia's largest festival, with over 1,800 registered events around the country each year. And the diverse range of events from national, national institutions to grassroots community organisations reach almost 1.5 million people each year. More people attend National Science Week events in total than the Melbourne Comedy Festival, City to Surf, Sydney Writers Festival and Canberra's Floriard combined. And twice as many people attended National Science Week events in 2013 than the Australian Open Championship in that year. In that year, 1,555 media reports were generated and the subsequent research showed that 40% of the Australian public were aware of National Science Week. So it's a very important activity. Other events linked with National Science Week included the Citizen Science Project run by ABC Online. Explore the Sea Floor in 2013 attracted almost 10,000 people who processed more than 300,000 images for Tasmanian marine scientists studying biodiversity changes. Last year, the Weather Detective um, won 11,000 users, uh, generated 360,000 data points for scientists in the U University of South Queensland looking at old ship records of weather to monitor uh, climate change. And this year there are 12 projects being uh, actively considered for the ABC Science Online Citizen, Citizen Science Project in National Science Week 2015. And Inspiring Australia is supporting the development of a new Australian citizen science network and that, will have, that network will have its first conference in Canberra in July. Inspiring Australia also supports the various initiatives of the Australian Science Media Centre and I'm delighted that the new Cymex Science Media Exchange website was launched last week as a facilitator for institutions and for scientists who want to directly share their stories with journalists. It's a vital resource for time-poor journalists. Please look at the site and join in to share your stories because those stories now go to the 1,314 journalists that are registered on the Australia Science Media Centre um, database, including 80 journalists from overseas. And those journalists are connected with 4,500 scientific experts through the work of the Australian Science Media Centre. And it's making significant impact with over 14,000 media clips generated from briefings each year. Science Media Centre has placed 18 scientists into newsrooms in different media organisations during the Scientists in Residence programme. And Science Media Savvy on the OSMC website, now on the Science Media Exchange website, helps scientists to work more effectively with the news media through online training modules. So the success of the Inspiring Australia initiative has much to do with the partnerships that have been formed in each state, in each territory, with research institutions, with businesses, governments and industry. And the national network of coordinators will help run activities year round. Make sure that you connect with your local Inspiring Australia offices and be part of the system. So what do we want to achieve over the next four years and how can you help? Well, we want to strengthen the communication infrastructure, allowing exchange of ideas and opportunities. We want to continue to develop National Science Week as the peak event to attract the attention of the country and to give focus on science, and particularly media focus on science during that, that, that time. We want people talking about science and its impacts. We want to continue to partner with as many people as possible, as many organisations as possible, to develop meaningful engagement of science opportunities for all Australians in their own communities. We want to share the events that are going on through combined calendars. We want to develop the regional hubs. And we want to develop programmes not only in citizen science, but in science tourism and science clubs. We want to celebrate the work of industries helping inspire Australia, such as Shell, who've been sponsoring the Science, the Shell Quest on Science Circus for 30 years, or BHP that have been supporting SIRA education for around about the same period, or L'Oreal supporting female scientists. 
We want to share those stories of industry inspiring Australia and encourage other companies to come on board to support a broad government academia business approach to STEM engagement. Inspiring teachers inspire students, but who's inspiring the teachers? So another area where we need significant effort there. Skills, hands and brains working together. We need to move into an area where we're trying to encourage youngsters not only to become academically sound, but to develop the skills that they're going to need to become the creative, imaginative people of the future. So we want to develop creativity, imagination, solutions thinking. We want to develop an entrepreneurial culture. We want to share stories of enterprise. We want to provide role models of young entrepreneurs to our school students. All of this is part of the, the work of the system. And we all have to do it together. So please get on board with us, uh, help us. We know that in this room are some of the best and brightest minds in Australia. And you have a, an undoubted passion for your science and your disciplines. And we need people like you. The country needs people like you. But we need to step up together. We need to step up in a cohesive way and share those exciting stories of science and innovation. And Inspiring Australia is creating a framework that hopefully will support you in that work. To quote Sir Mark Walport, the Chief Scientific Advisor to the UK and Government, science isn't finished until it's communicated. And better communication of science makes good sense all around. Thank you.